My name is Chris Harris, and I'm from RMATutors.com, and welcome to this video on measuring entropy change part two. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be looking at neutralization. Now, this is the second video in a series of four videos that look into measuring enthalpy change. Um, there is the first video that I've done, which is the enthalpy change of fuels. Uh, and that would be useful to watch first before this one if you really don't know anything about enthalpy changes. Uh, and it will go into the equation in a little bit more detail than this video will. So if you're looking for that video, then just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video there. But like I say, I'm going to assume that you know how to use the equation at least. Okay, so neutralization is a reaction where we take an acid and an alkali and we form a neutral. And these reactions are generally exothermic, so they give out heat energy. So we're going to look at what the actual enthalpy bit means. And you'll see the delta H for the underground symbol, which is this little bit here. Uh, and we're going to go through what that means uh, in terms of uh, this question here. So the delta bit means change in. The H stands for enthalpy. And the little underground symbol stands for standard conditions, which is 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals. We can use these units of, the, of enthalpy, shall we say, to actually... Uh, work out how much energy is given out per mole of substance and we can compare them because they're all under standard conditions so the units are kilojoules per mole as you can see at the top there okay so we've also going to use an equation which is this one here and it's q equals mc delta t q is actually energy in joules it's different to enthalpy which is kilojoules per mole so you can't get them two mixed up uh, m stands for mass of water or solution so in this case we're actually going to be talking about mixing an acid with an alkali uh, in a uh, maybe a polystyrene uh, cup. And the solution is obviously the mass of the solution that we're going to be mixing together, which we'll come on to in a minute in the question. Uh, C is specific heat capacity. It's given the number 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Uh, and this number you um, will be given in your exam, so you don't need to worry about that. And the delta T is the change of temperature of water or the solution that we are looking at. Okay, so we're going to look at it in terms of an example question. And we've got one here. So it's 50 centimeters cubed of one moles per dm cubed of HCl neutralized 50 centimeters cubed of one mole per dm cubed sodium hydroxide. The temperature increased by 5.2 degrees Celsius. And we have to calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction. So we want to work out the enthalpy change, which is delta H. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by writing our equation. I think we'll do this in red. So we're going to use this here first. We need to calculate energy before we actually calculate enthalpy. And energy is Q, so which is the energy bit. And we're going to have our mass. Now, the mass is of the solution that we're actually using. So unlike with the fuel, uh, where we're actually measuring the mass of the fuel, in this case, we're measuring the mass of both solutions after we've mixed them together. So the mass of uh, the uh, acid is 50, and the mass of the uh, sodium hydroxide is also 50. Now we're assuming a density of one gram per centimeter cubed. So that means that for every centimeter cubed that we have, we can assume that is worth one gram. So we can convert the centimeters cubed straight into grams. So 50 plus 50 is going to be 100. Okay, and the next bit is we're going to multiply that by 4.18 because that is our specific heat capacity. And the change in temperature, it says 5.2 degrees Celsius. Uh, the change in temperature in degrees Celsius is exactly the same as the change in temperature in Kelvin. So all we have to do is just put 5.2. Okay, so if we put that all into our calculator, we should get a value of 2173. Uh, 0.6 joules uh, and this should be a negative in front of there because this reaction is exothermic it said that the temperature increased so we must put our negative in front of there that's really really important okay so the next bit uh, is to actually because we want to work out the enthalpy change we have the energy value here in joules we can convert that to kilojoules later on we also need to work out the number of moles of this substance so what we're going to have to do is to work out the number of moles of each of the components in here and effectively work out which one is in excess, if any. And I'll come on to that in a minute because that's really important. Okay, so the number of moles, we're going to start with the moles of, we'll start with moles of acid first, I think. 
So the number of moles of acid is, uh, remember moles, because these are solutions, we're looking at concentration times volume divided by a thousand. So the concentration in this case of the acid is one moles per dm cubed. So we're going to do one times by the volume, and the volume is 50 centimeters cubed. Now, we have to convert that into decimeters cubed because we want to work out um, the number of moles. So um, what we can do is we can just add times by 10 to the minus 3 on the end of that. Times by 10 to the minus 3 is exactly the same as um, uh, dividing by 1,000. So it just makes the numbers a little bit neater, that's all. So we're going to put that in there. And if obviously, if we put that into our calculator, we don't really need a calculator because it's just 1 times 50 times by 10 to the minus 3. Uh, this should give us 0 0.05 moles. Okay, dead easy. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same for moles of alkali. Okay, moles of alkali, you can see we have one moles per dm cubed of sodium hydroxide and we had 50 centimetres cubed of that. So again, it's going to be exactly the same. 50 times by 10 to the minus 3. So that's going to be 0.05 moles. Now you can see here that we don't actually have an excess. They've both got equal number of moles. Uh, if we look at the reaction that's happening here as well, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So we don't need to multiply any of these by two, etc. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so this is pretty straightforward. But what if we had more moles of one substance than another? Which one do we use? Um, when we're working out the uh, enthalpy, we need to actually pick the lowest number of moles. Um, and the reason why is because that's the limiting factor. So, for example, if we have a look at this example here, what I've done is I've written down the number of moles of acid, and I've just given you this as an example. So, for example, we've got five acids here, and then we've got five alkalis. Now, for every acid and alkali that reacts, a small amount of energy is produced. So, providing we have enough of each of them, we should get a bit of energy from each reaction. So, you can see here, and I'll show you what I mean. So, um, if we draw this in green, so the acid will react with the alkali, and every time it does this, a small amount of energy is actually given off. There we go. But let's assume that we had uh, an excess of one of them. So let's say we had an excess of acid. So I'm going to rub these out. So if we take that one out and that one out, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually have an excess of acid. So I'm going to remove some of the alkalis. So you can see here that now we have five acids still, but we only have three alkalis. Now, the limiting factor is the number of moles of alkali. So, again, we're going to show the reaction between the two of them. So you can see here that we've got a reaction there, we've got a reaction there, and we've got a reaction there. But effectively, we only get the amount of energy, or we only get energy from these three. So it doesn't matter how much acid we've got in here. What's limiting the amount of energy being produced is actually the lowest number of moles of the substance. And in this case, we've only got three alkalis. So when we're working out which moles to use, when we're working out the enthalpy change, which is this one here, remember this is kilojoules per mole, we've always got to pick the lowest number of moles of the substance. So in this example here, we would go for the number of moles of alkali and not acid when we're working this out. But in this example here, uh, we've actually got equal number of moles. But there is an example, there is a video, should I say, which looks into uh, enthalpy changes of displacement reactions that looks into a calculation where we do have an excess number of moles of one substance. So if you want to have a look at that video, just click on the link below and you can find it there. OK, so for example, this one is just equal number of moles, so it doesn't really matter which number we pick. So we're going to use the uh, enthalpy change, which is Q, which is the energy divided by moles. Again, we can pick any of them. So we're going to do this in red. So we're going to put this here. Delta H equals, and we're going to do it in kilojoules. So effectively what we do is we move the decimal point back three places. So that's one, two, three, because we're dividing it by a thousand. So that's going to be minus 2.1736, and that's kilojoules. And we're going to divide that by the number of moles. Again, we can pick either one of these. If one of them was in excess, we would always pick the smaller number of moles uh, when we're working this out, because that would be the limiting factor. Uh, and then if we put that into our calculator, uh, we should get minus uh, 43.5 kilojoules per mole. And there, 
is the final answer. And remember, you've always got to put in the negative here. This shows this reaction is exothermic. That's really, really important. Make sure your units are right and make sure you've worked out the right number of moles as well. But you have to work out both substances to work out which one was in excess, if any. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye-bye.